Uh, another interesting uh, question, now that you've mentioned our students who get to come to train with you, Dr. Gupta, a lot of the times the thought is also, the thought process is also that, you know, if I'm a medical professional, if I'm a clinician, uh, if I'm an MBBS graduate who's been practicing for some time, why do I need further training or what do I need to be trained on? I do understand what diabetes is. Th this thought process still exists. So can you tell us uh, why is it that a specific training or an upgradation important or how one can become a skilled diabetes professional? The fact of the matter is that diabetes has profused a lot. The knowledge has profused a lot actually. Like I was telling you that in early 90s, we just had two group of drugs. Today we have seven or eight group of drugs which are available. Each group has probably three or four drugs. Each drug right. has effects and side effects. Insulin itself has become designer insulin, basal insulin, short-acting insulin, long-acting insulin. I think right. any, any professional or any clinician, it's not easy to keep pace with the kind of knowledge which has been filtering in and coming in rapidly uh, over the last few decades and years, as, and especially in the field of diabetes. I think one of the mm -hmm. reasons why diabetes is so much as noise is because of the kind of medication and choices which are available to a clinician as of today. Remember, the insulin was, uh, you know, uh, discovered in 1921 and till now, till 2019, still insulin remains one of the cornerstones of management per se. So in, in as much as the things remain the same, so much, so many things keep on changing also. So I think right. uh, that with the kind of clinical trials, the clinical studies, the pros, the cons, and understand one point, today's patient is no longer one of those patients uh, in which you are the only source of knowledge or information given here. A net is a very, very parallel track which goes on in every practice nowadays. Yeah. I think a patient jolly well checks, cross checks whatever information you're giving on yeah. the net. And yeah. net is something which provides them a lot of pros and cons and pluses and minuses. And right. They always cross check really, you know, you're, so you're always on your guard. You can't really sit on your old knowledge and sit down and kind of, you know, like we used to do 20 years ago, kind of thinking that we are the only people who can provide knowledge to them. So, you know, patients cross check your knowledge, they cross check your prescription. I think all my, and I'm talking about even a tertiary level center like ours, all our prescriptions are vetted by the net actually. And then people cross check, check, ask cross questions, etc. So I think yeah. if you skip a little bit here or there, then I think mm. the patient is gone. He's no longer your patient. So what, yeah. what the reason why this uh, this diabetes professional courses and all have become more popular is because they pop, they, they kind of, uh, they polarize the whole thought process and kind of give you an insight into all kind of possibilities and kind of patients which you have and uh, mm -hmm. keep up with the knowledge also. The ADA guidelines come in every year. So you can imagine right. if the guideline is coming every year, then it means some tweaking and some changes happening every year. So a lot sure. of trials, a lot of kidney damage, a lot of uh, cardiac safe drugs, a lot of side effects, a lot of uh, current positionings, keeps on changing. There is a ASA guideline, ADA guidelines, there is a WHO guideline, there is a EAST guidelines. So guidelines, nice was there. guidelines so guidelines help us but i think the uh, an average doctor who's specifically dealing with diabetes and more and more about diabetes should be well aware of all all the available information which is there and that all has to go through his mindset and go on to his pen uh, so that he is one to one with the patient and can provide mm -hmm. the latest information which the patient seeks so i think mm -hmm. such courses probably bridge that gap if i have done my post graduation 5 years ago I already might be redundant in today's practice, actually, with the kind of uh, things come in. Today, the kind of practice which I do for diabetes is probably different than what I used to do, um, you know, 10 years ago and drastically different. And sometimes I see myself mm -hmm. by prescription, which I did 10 years ago. I think a gross change has happened over a period of time. So I think it's the reason why, it's, why, 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 why you need to be a skilled diabetes professional is number one, because of the demand of the times. Number two, because of the knowledge and the profusion of uh, choices which are available to us. Number three, mm. because the patients are so demanding today, mm. they want absolutely the latest information and they probably will cross check you whether you know the latest or not, because some of them are so well informed that they come yeah. after checking it out on the net themselves, actually. So I think you yeah. can't let your guard down and in, in today's litigation world and, and all kind of cross check purposes, you need to be absolutely up and about with the latest to kind of give the best possible services to the patient. Now, whether you are a you're, you're a tertiary level doctor or whether you are a primary care physician, patient doesn't care about that. For him, the information has to be absolutely up to date and the right one. And quite yeah. a few patients, they have their relatives and all abroad. And, you know, they themselves provide all kind of information and, and uh, advice. And, you know, everybody's advisor nowadays. 
So I think that's one yeah. reason why probably such kind of courses have tried to hone the skills of a clinician who wants to know more and more about diabetes per se, because that is where the practice uh, interest is of that particular doctor. And even if it is not the core uh, branch which he wants to specialize in, the knowledge of diabetes yeah. goes waste. It is additional to everything. Even even some of my students have been the gynecologists who are keen to know more about diabetes so that they can manage their GDM patients better. That GDM better, yeah. I think every specialty is very, very interested in. You'll be surprised the other day a colleague of mine in my own hospital, I'm talking about Apollo, a gentleman who's mm. six year old who is a urologist mm. and he does a mm. urology practice. He specifically asked me, Can I want to join this course next time? Because I don't know how to handle my patients of diabetes. And he's a urologist and he knows that more and more patients with urology uh, have diabetes yeah. and they ask questions which are uncomfortable. So I think you can't just simply refer a patient just like that. You have to be, uh, you know, up and about yourself. That's the reason. I yeah. And it's an interesting point you brought out, Dr. Gupta. Today we see when we see patients uh, who come in uh, to whichever OPD they walk into, they are either pre-diabetic or diabetic, whichever complaint and whichever specialty they're visiting for, whatever their presenting symptom is, there's always this attached story that's going on. Or uh, all the more when the patients are admitted, management of sugars has become such a major concern. Most of them have a cross-referral to a diabetologist or an endocrinologist, you know. So I think uh, that's a very, very uh, valid point that you've brought out why we need to uh, upscale ourselves. Now, uh, if I have to talk about uh, how one can become a skilled diabetes professional to just give you a seat to thought, uh, one area wherein I have seen a deficit or a gap in terms of knowledge or confidence in terms of the way they handle the patient is, if I have to talk about diabetes, is a lot of the doctors, uh, you know, residents or, you know, practicing doctors in two-tier, three-tier areas or even for that matter in cities, one area they I've seen there has been a gap is uh, insulin administration, when to start, how to start and what to start with. This I have seen uniformly across different batches of our own students and I see this across different hospitals as well. So that is one area we have seen that, you know, uh, probably these doctors need help to gain that confidence to learn from a professional so that they're more confident to take that call next time or else they're either delaying it. Probably they're not starting it when they need to because they're not confident enough. And these are actual testimonials uh, we've heard from students. You know, before going there, we, we were not sure. We knew that we had to start insulin, but we were not confident enough. But now that we've been there for 20 days or 30 days, we've seen them do it. Now we are confident about doing it. You know, all the more for the complications or the consequences that they have to deal if they are initiated. So that's one area I can talk about. So how one can become a skilled diabetes professional is probably pick up a program and join and get the training done. That's simple. But what are the areas they can get upskilled is one thing I can think of is insulin administration. Would you like to add a few more, Dr. Gupta? You know, theory is something different and practically something different. So I think yeah. as much as theory you do, as much as guidelines, anybody can download on the net and kind of go through them. But I think it's a practicality of the whole thing which kind of uh, helps in gaining confidence. So I think when yeah. we run through such courses in our own hospital, uh, at least a patient, uh, sorry, a student population is exposed to hundreds of cases, you know, of different variety, of different uh, kind of, right. uh, uh, you know, to tosses and turns and all kind of thing. So I think we discuss mm. case discussions are probably an integral part of such kind of programs. And a patient, mm. uh, sorry, the students, they try to understand that in their situation, in their practice, where can it fit in actually? Nothing like a mm. hand on practice, really. You know, just, just like these cricketers, they always say that whatever you might do on the nets doesn't matter. Ultimately, it's a match. Yeah. match and, and the more match practice you have, the better it is. I think similarly yeah. with this, uh, with this uh, the touch program which we have in a hospital, for example, I think the students ultimately they are very comfortable once we kind of show them how to give insulin, how to give the drips. Uh, how to, insulin is it always remains a shaky area. I think one of the reasons yeah. why so much inertia is there in, in students is because of uh, not having that much exposure in uh, insulin. And uh, like I said, yeah. insulin has also changed so much in the last 10, 15 years. The concept yeah. of basal bolus or basal plus or analogs and uh, hemologs and all those kind of things have changed a lot. And it's an ever-going branch. It's an ever-going branch per se. So I think a practicality mm. of insulin is one thing. Even as, mm. as simple, I think as practically of what diet to tell the patient. It's yeah. some problem. And let me be honest with you. After a certain age, we detest asking questions. And as a, as a doctor, I can tell you that beyond a certain age, you are ashamed of asking questions. Who are you going to ask questions to? 
you're not going to ask questions to your junior doctor you're not going to ask questions to your colleague so much you probably gain knowledge from some expert speaking in your city or whatever so i think a classes like these a training program like this give you a free hand to kind of ask whatever questions you have kind of clear your yeah. and kind of yeah. you know inculcate in your practice so i think i've had people who have come in 40s and 50s and have been in practice for 20 30 years but it's 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 great for them to go back to being a student again which allows them to yeah. ask all kind of doubts and questions which you have and as simple mm -hmm. as thing at what kind of a diet a person should take at what time the insulin have to be taken how many times in a day you need to monitor how do you manage a gestational diabetes patient is insulin the only choice we have whether we have any other choices what do the latest guidelines say in a cardiac patient mm -hmm. how do you manage a patient if a patient is being taken for surgery how do you kind of titrate yeah. those of insulin you know to give after managing mm -hmm. a patient in the hospital when the patient is being discharged how do you kind of uh, you know simplify the send them a blood prescription yeah all these small small practical tips yeah, yeah. which come in uh, are something which kind of can be picked up over a period of time only in a practical way i don't think mm. any textbook or any any kind of guidelines can teach us all yeah. these finer nuances uh, you know of, right. of kind of managing a patient and right that, you're very right people yeah so like i said uh, these were uh, my comments were from the few testimonials that i've heard from students when they usually come in for the examinations or vivas about when we ask them how we try to take a feedback about if this program was able to make a difference to them in terms of how they handle the patients before and now and one thing that has always come up is this confidence that they've got after working with the clinician closely you know probably they knew what to give and how much to give but you know like they say it's different with different patient even the same insulin and the timings and dosages so i think um that confidence can be gained only when you closely observe and work around a consultant or a clinician who sees enough patients like you said when they have enough exposure i think um nothing like it and that's and what and and sorry so to interrupt sometimes it also happens that maybe you are probably doing almost the same kind of thing which probably is being done there and that also mm. gives you confidence okay fine we are also doing the same stuff which no. they are and actually when there when there are five people doing the same thing and they might be doing mm. the same thing in kakinada and they might be doing the same thing in delhi and they might mm. be doing the same thing in guwahati it gives mm. you confidence that you are on the right wicket and there's nothing wrong with it so i think these kind of things small small things go a long way in enhancing your confidence in your practice and kind of right. making you a better clinician right 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 absolutely